Hi Stitchers, it's Nell with Little Yellow House Crafts. I'm back! Finally, it's been a very busy summer. We've been going on vacations and visiting family and we had family reunions and anyway, we're, we're back and life is back to normal, as normal as it ever gets. And so I wanted to do the second half of my stash video that I promised you all months ago and I need to get up. Um, the first half was in my previous video and that was my kits. Um, as part of my cross stitch stash, so today will be the rest of my stash, which is all the non-kit things that I have. Um, but before I get into that, I want to show you a finish. I finished the first part of my Amish Life series called Hanging the Quilts. As a reminder, this came from um, the March and April of 1987 issue of Cross Stitch and Country Crafts. Uh, and you can find these on eBay. There's lots of them on eBay, so if you're interested, you can find it there. And this one is called Hanging the Quilts. And that's the first part of the series. There are three parts. And here it is. Get up a little closer so you can see some of the detail. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I, I love how it, how it came out. The back stitching wasn't nearly the beast that I thought it was going to be. I did decide to leave off the French knots that they had charted um, for all the little chickens and chicks. They had uh, French knots charted for their eyes and it they were just too big. Even with one strand of DMC, um, it, they just came out too big and they looked kind of crazy. <laughs> crazy Frankenstein chickens, so I decided to leave them off. Um, but that is done and I'm just so pleased and it's fun to see the rest of you who are working on this same project. Um, there's a few of us on um, the Facebook group Cross Stitch and Discuss that I've seen working on this project. So it's it's nice to get inspired by your um, by your projects of the same thing. So just to carry on with that, as we go into my stash, I do have the rest of my fabric and floss kitted up for this the second and third part. Um, as a reminder, I'm using 28 count um, glass blue Monaco as my fabric for this project and I'm really liking the Monaco. I, I wasn't sure I was going to like it because um, it was something I just bought in a um, I think a Hobby Lobby because um, I wanted to start this project right away. I didn't want to wait for fabric and I'm, I'm it's not my favorite even weave but it's it's nice. It's nicer than I was expecting. I was pleasantly surprised so I have all the threads kitted up for that and all the fabric so I can carry on with parts two and three, um, which, if you're interested, come in the May and June issue of 87, as well as the July and August issue of 87. Um, but while we're on this topic, I wanted to show you some more of the um, projects I have kitted up from these magazines. I apologize if you can hear my, my little boy's fussing. He's just got put down for a nap and he's not wanting to nap, so if you hear him fussing, ignore him. <laughs> um, this first one comes from the May and June issue of 87, so the same issue where the second part of that Amish Life series comes, and that issue was just chock full of beautiful things, and so I actually have two more projects kitted up from that same issue. The first one is called Antique Needlework, and I love this. I think this is so fun. Um, there's all sorts of antique needlework tools up here, so we have a tatting shuttle, a pin cushion, some spools, um, let's see, what else is there? There's some scissors, a laying tool, or a trolley needle, some people call it a trolley needle. Um, there's a skein of DMC down here and some needles. Um, and then down here it has a Bible verse from Ecclesiastes and it says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. So I thought that was appropriate for needle workers. Um, there's a little bit of open work on this as well. Right here there's a band of ladder stitch and then underneath it, right here, there's a band of trellis stitch. So some pulled thread work, which kind of intimidates me, but I'll get to it someday. There's also hem stitching, antique hem stitching all the way around it. Um, so it's a really beautiful piece. It's, we love to stitch about needlework, right? Because it's what we love to do. And I have that kitted up and ready to go. I should just preface this all by saying that I am one of those stitchers who will buy a new skein of DMC for every project I do. I know, maybe it's wasteful, and I should, I should um, 
justified a little bit by saying that when I have, you know, quite a bit built up of one color, I will use it. I won't go out and buy the same color. Um, so this is not every color needed for the project, but it's the ones that I didn't have more than one skein of. And I'm just always paranoid about running out of something. So I have my threads um, kitted up for antique needlework. And then this is the linen it calls for. This is linen, like I said. This is a piece of 32 count antique ivory Belfast linen. It's really beautiful, um, vintage looking linen, a natural color, very vintage looking, and that goes with the project, obviously. It's antique needlework, and uh, it will lend itself, I think, really beautifully to this project, and I'm excited to give that one a try, especially to try the open work, because um, I have a few projects that require a little bit of open work or hard anger, and haven't been brave enough to try them yet, but I have them kitted up and ready to go, so as soon as I get brave enough. And then the third thing I have from this same issue um, is actually the cover photo, and this is called Gathering Honey, and I think this is just so pretty. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? The flowers and the honeybees, and you can see there's honeycomb in the corners. This, this center portion of the garden Excuse me, it reminds me of a Chatelaine a little bit, um, a similar style, and I just think that's so lovely, so pretty. And it says, um, there's a little saying here, it's another Bible verse, and it says, Pleasant words are like honey, like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body, and that's from Proverbs. Um, so I just think that's gorgeous. Just absolutely beautiful and I love honeybees I love the thought behind the honeybees you know being hard workers and busy all day long um, so I have that one kitted up and so I have my threads for gathering honey and then this is uh, my fabric it's again it's a linen all of these from the cross stitching country crafts um, were charted to be on linen so I decided to go for it this is a 28 count cream linen it's a cashel linen in cream, 28 count. Um, so I have that one ready to go and I love that. I just think that's so pretty. And that was actually done, there were two of these sort of sampler style um, charts. One was this one, the Gathering Honey, and then a few years later they came out with, this, with a second one. And that was in September and October of 89. And this is it, and it's called the Rose Garden. So you can see it's very similar in style to Gathering Honey. A little bit different, but very similar style, and I think it's the same designer. Um, down to the same thing, it has a Bible verse, but just beautiful with the roses and the butterflies, and there's this kind of white trellis all around the outside. Again, the center reminds me of a Chatelaine. Anyway. So Rose Garden, um, the verse is from Isaiah, and it says, The desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. So really beautiful, and I have that kitted up as well. I have all of these magazine ones kitted up. Um, so I have my threads. This is just how I organize them. I put them in Ziploc bags so I can label uh, what the project is. And then I label my fab my fabric with the name of the piece as well so I don't get them confused. This is the uh, linen for Rose Garden and this is a 28 count um, linen in the color Dirty. I think it's, yeah, in the color Dirty. It's a darker natural color. The reason for that being the white trellis all around the outside you need a darker fabric. The interesting thing is that the linen that the actual pattern called for isn't made anymore. That color you can't find it anymore. And so I just had to kind of do my best to guess what would be the closest thing to it, and that was Dirty. Um, the color Dirty. <laughs> Such a funny name. The color that was called for um, is a little bit warmer of a brown, but this is pretty close and I think it'll work just fine. Um, since you can't get that one anymore, I don't know when they stopped making that, but since that was charted in the 80s, it's it's been a fair while. Um, before I put all of those magazines away, let me just show you in the um, July and August of 87 issue, this is what the final project will look like, the Amish Life series. So you can see here, this is the one that I've done, and these are the other two. So you may have seen, like I said, you may have seen some people working on this on uh, Cross Stitch and Discuss, if you're a member of that group, but 
those are the projects I have kitted up from the magazines. Um, so let's go on. Next, I will show you, this is a, um, a told in a garden pattern, which told in a garden is a designer that is in the family with uh, lavender and lace and a few other um, styles. I'm not sure if they're all done by the same designer, but they're packaged very similarly and they're like a family of designs. Um, but this is what it looks like the Told in a Garden. And this one is called The Country Store. And it looks like this. Sorry for the glare. There you go. So it's again, kind of a little Amish uh, style. See there's a little Amish boy in his blue shirt and suspenders and a little straw hat. And he's at the country store. And I just think that's beautiful. I love that. Um, it's very my style. It's so funny. I have such a predictable style. But um, I did purchase fabric for this, and I purchased this fabric uh, years ago now. I think it's been a f at least four or five years, and I just haven't started it yet. But this is from Silk Weaver, and this is a piece of Belfast linen, 32 count, in the color Mississippi Blue. And as I mentioned in, I think, my first or second video, I'm not a huge fan of hand-dyed fabrics. Um, I struggle with them. I feel like sometimes they take attention away from the piece that you're um, stitching and it can kind of distract from the design but with something like this where the modeling is so subtle I don't mind it and I and I liked this color blue better than than other things I found so that's by Silk Weaver in Mississippi blue some Belfast linen and that's for country store and I have the threads for it ready to go um, so just waiting for the right Time to start that one. I, I don't know. I'm not a serial starter. I, um, I struggle to start things if I have too many whips on my plate, and especially right now, when I'm I'm working to a deadline to get my son's Christmas stocking done before Christmas this year. Um, I I struggle, and I don't want to start too many new things because I know I'll want to stitch on them. I'm um, having that problem with my Harry Potter giant sampler. I just can't seem to put it down. It's so much fun to stitch. It's my first Clouds Factory, and man, those are fun. Those are so fun to stitch. Um, and so I have to force myself to put it down to work on the stocking. So I probably won't start anything new um, until next year, with the exception of my Brooks Books Advent Animals, which I'll be participating in the stitch along um, on November 1st. But more about that later. So that was the country store. Um, of these, so I have two uh, pieces of fabric in here and some floss, and these are for some free designs um, that have come up over time that I found. Um, they're both a sampler style, and I can just show you one of them. I don't have a picture of the other one. But this, uh, this first one is by a French designer, and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it. Um, but this is what it will look like. It's, a little, it's kind of a Quaker style um, sampler with the stags and just a really interesting shape and a beautiful color with that deep burgundy um, on the cream. And I just, I don't know, something about this drew me in and it was free. So I went ahead and downloaded and printed off the pattern and I have the fabric and floss for it. Let me show you. So in case you are interested, um, it, I'm stitching it with 902. DMC, which is just a nice deep burgundy. And then the fabric I chose for it is a Lugana, I think. Yes, this is a 32 count Lugana in cream. Just a nice off-white cream color and I just think that will just pop so lovely and it's just as the the picture shows. Um, so I have that ready to go, and I, I think that will be a nice, quick, easy one to stitch, all one color. Um, there's something sort of satisfying about doing those along the same lines, I think, as black work and stuff like that. It's just a kind of a repetitive, um, stress-relieving type of project. The other one that I have that's similar is um, Ellen Maurer, or Maurer Stroh. Um, she's a, a cross-stitch designer. She's the same designer who has done the flower of the month series that I see a lot of you working on. Um, this was a free project she um, 
she posted in 2008 and it's called the Rose Sampler and I don't um, I don't have it I don't have like a final picture of it I just have the pattern which even though it's free I don't want to well whatever I'll show you the first page it's a free project so you can see it's just rose lots of scallops um, it's beautiful it's a really nice sampler and I was I was drawn to it I'm and again it's a one color kind of deal and so I decided to do this on a little bit deeper of a Lugana this is mushroom Lugana which I know is Carolyn's favorite <laughs> I, I like it too I've used it several times before and it's just a nice neutral color but it's not a white or a cream it's a little bit deeper and I'm gonna stitch um, this with uh, blue and this is 517 I think that will look just nice so nice so that's for the rose sampler and again I don't know when I will get to that but I have my floss and my fabric um, kit it up and ready and someday it will get done I really don't have a huge stash you'll see I'm almost finished showing you my stash so you know everything I know everybody kind of does their stash in different ways some people love to hoard patterns and they have books and books of patterns and I think that's really fun for me that would drive me nuts <laughs> it would make me crazy to have a pattern that I wanted to stitch but not to have floss and fabric ready so I could do it whenever I wanted, if that makes sense. I like to have everything ready to go and it's sitting in my stash so that the minute I decide I'm ready to start it, I can. Um, in the same vein, I can't stash just floss or just fabric. Like they have the fabric of the month clubs or you can do um, special hand dyed floss that you'll get like a monthly um, subscription to and it'll come. I can't do that either because it would drive me crazy, again, to have a whole bunch of fabric but nothing assigned to it because there'd be this little piece of me that would think you know there's some fabric in there that I will never use it will never fit for anything and maybe I, I'm a little bit of a control freak obviously um, but that's how I do my stash and it works for me and I like knowing what I have I like not having an enormous stash um, but enough to get excited about some stuff and all things that I really like and then when I find a pattern that I must have, I just wait until I'm ready to kit it up and then I will buy it along with the fabric and the floss and get it all ready to go. Which leads me to my most recent purchase, which is my Country Cottage Needleworks Red, White & Blue um, that I bought uh, just this past summer. Just this, this past summer. I guess it is September. Um, this summer I purchased it and I decided to go ahead and kit it up. Um, since I was buying it and I've shown shown you this before but this is the linen it's a small piece of lamb's wool linen um, 30 count and it's a little bit a little bit darker than like an ivory um, nice and slubby if that's a word and then as I've mentioned before I prefer to just use DMC I prefer not to um, do things in in variegated or hand dyed flosses or over dyed flosses um, it might be a control freak issue I think it's more that I just I don't know why I don't know why I struggle I've done things in those variegated flosses before the hand dyed and over dyed and I I liked it there was nothing wrong with it I just I don't know I just prefer to use the DMC I don't know maybe some of you can tell me why are any of you that way Anyway, um, the, the pattern calls for Classic Colorworks and Weeks Dye Works, but I went ahead and replaced it with just some DMC in the colors. It's a very simple pattern. There's only, what, six colors here. A red, white, and a blue, and then kind of a, a creamy yellow, a brown, and a green um, for red, white, and bloom. So I have that kitted up and ready to go. Um, I love... Country Cottage Needleworks, I tell you, there are so many things. I've done a few of theirs, and I love, I love Country Cottage Needleworks. There are so many on 123 Stitch that I'm itching to buy, but I'm not ready to kit them up yet, so I'm not buying them yet. See how I, see how this works? Um, this one I won't show you in great detail because I've shown it to you before. Um, this is for Save the Stitches. I have the pattern, and I have everything kitted up. The fabric just so I can remind you, the fabric is a Lugana, it's a cream, 28 count cream Lugana, and then I have my, 
pearl cotton and my DMC, I have my Krennic, and I have my beads. And I am doing it in the gold, silver, and copper um, like she did in her, her original. I, I could have changed it. I don't have anything against changing the colors, and if I do want something changed, I change it. But I kind of liked the idea of the, the metallics in those gold, silver, and copper with the black. So eventually I will get that started. This one I have also already shown you some of, um, but this is my Heirloom Nativity Sampler by the Victoria Sampler, and this is going to be my big venture into Hardanger down here. Um, didn't did Mackenzie just do some Hardanger in her Dinky Dyes samplers? Maybe she just did the stitching. Maybe she didn't actually do any cutting. I can't remember. Mackenzie, did you cut yours or did you just stitch it? Anyway, she got me excited to do this one because it's a similar style. It's a band sampler like the Dinky Dyes with the Hardanger at the bottom, but Christmassy. I have um, a 32 count Storm Lugana um, picked out for it. I'll just show it to you briefly because I've shown it before. It's a This is a hand dyed, but again, the modeling is very subtle and I like the color. And then I have my accessory packs. The Victoria Sampler does it this way. I have my white accessory pack, my white silk, and then my accessory pack, which comes with all of the silks and cottons as well as some beads and little star charms, um, ready to go for that, and then my white pearl cotton, which it calls for as well to do this one. So this one I've had in my stash for a long time, and I've just never been brave enough to start it. Um, I think because of the open work, I think the hardanger scares me a little bit, but maybe I'll do some practice pieces. I have some little extra pieces of linen and things sitting around from old projects so I can practice a little bit and then go for it. And then the last thing I have is just my Brooks Books Advent Animals, which you've seen before. I have all of my floss and then my 25 pieces of denim blue uh, linen. I think it's a 28 count. Or no, I think it's a 32 count. This is 32 count denim blue um, linen and it's got 25 pieces of them all surged and then the one exception to my always using my Q-snaps is when I do something really small, like these ornaments, and I use a spring-loaded hoop for that. Um, the reason being that I will never have to move the hoop bec um, because it's so small, so I won't get any hoop creases on the actual design. And the other reason being that they're just too small for um, a Q-snap to be practical. I feel like the Q-snaps are bulkier than a, a hoop. It's the reason why a lot of people don't like them. Um, and I love my Q-snaps, but for something this small, I think a hoop makes more sense. So I have my little hoop ready to go. And I think that stitch along starts on November 1st. Really excited to get that started. They're just such cute little animals. I think we're up to number 18 now. So Brooke, you gotta get the last seven out quickly. <laughs> it's okay even if she doesn't. We have 18 to start with um, for the stitch along. So anyway, there you go guys. That's my stash. Like I said, it's not enormous. It's not tiny, um, but it's a good size for me and I have everything kitted up that I have patterns for, which is the way I like to operate. And yeah, so I have lots to keep me busy. I'm excited to get finished with my stocking and uh, a new start. I also have a, um, a new start that I'm not showing you today of my newest um, Mill Hill ornament that I, I started. I, I showed in a previous video all my Santas. I did start the Ireland Santa. Um, so he is, he is now a new start. I'm not really working on him too much because I'm working on my stocking and my Harry Potter sampler like I said before. But anyway, if you have questions or comments, please let me know. Um, Post them down in the comment section and I will do my best to answer to you, answer you. And thanks to all of you who've been subscribing. It's really fun to see all of your faces pop up um, in my emails when I get notified of new subscribers. So I hope you enjoy it and I'll catch you guys next time. Okay, bye!